This is Mazin Judy, assistant professor in the Baghdad Medical College. By the name of God, I would like to present the lecture to the fourth year students undergraduate in the oncology module. The title of the lecture is the management of symptoms caused by cancer and cancer related therapy. Objectives of this lecture, classification of the drugs used in the malignancy management, goals of malignancy treatment, methods of administration of these drugs, side effects of chemotherapeutic agents regarding the assessment and management of these side effects, management of certain cancer-related symptoms. This is the most important point in this lecture is the management of symptoms related to the cancer and cancer therapy. Yes. Now, the medical oncology groups, uh, medical oncology drug groups used for the management of the malignancy include chemotherapeutic agents, targeted therapy, immunotherapy, endocrine therapy, and palliative drugs for palliative treatment. The chemotherapeutic agents are different from targeted therapy. These act on the older cells of the body, while the targeted therapy acts mainly on the malignant cells on certain target of these malignant cells. The, the targeted therapy include group of drugs like monoclonal antibody and also tyrosine kinase inhibitors. Monoclonal antibody like the trastuzumab, uh, rituximab and others, while tyrosine kinase inhibitors include group of drugs acting on the tyrosine kinase enzyme like imatinib, ilotinib and so. Immunotherapy, a group of drugs that newly used for the management of migraine disease like pembrolizumab and nimolumab. Endocrine therapy used for certain malignancies like breast cancer and include a group of drugs like tamoxifene, aromatase inhibitors and others. While the drugs used for palliative palliation of the malignancy, a group of drugs like morphine which will be presented in details in another lecture for this uh, undergraduate state. Goals of the treatment by these drugs could be cure, control of the disease or palliation of the disease. Cure meaning there is disappearance of the malignant disease and does not return again. While control means control and stopping of the cancer from growing and spreading. Palliation when there is the cure and control are not possible. And here the goal of treatment is to relieve the symptoms caused by cancer and improve the quality of life. There are many factors should be recommended when there is choice of the disease of the drugs for the management of malignant disease. And these factors uh, include the type of the cancer, stage of the cancer, specific characters for the patient himself, like the age, performance status of the patient, health problems, and also another factor is the type of the anti-cancer drug used before. Meaning the type of the cancer that is uh, not, yeah, not only treatment for every malignancy in the body, but even in the malignancy of certain organ, cannot be used the specific drug for this organ. I mean, for example, bronchogenic cancer, which is the malignancy of the, of the lung, we have two major types, which are small cell, non-small lung, small, small cell lung cancer, and non-small cell lung cancer. These two entities are totally different regarding the biological behavior and regarding the uh, aggressiveness and type of treatment used for each type of lung cancer, which are which is the bronchogenic cancer. The stage of the cancer, meaning the extent of the disease. And there are many systems are used for staging of the malignancy. The most famous one is what is called TNM staging, where the T refers to the uh, tumor size, N for the lymph node involvement, and M for the presence or absence of the metastasis. Specific factors are important for related to the patient himself for the choice of the anti-malignant drug. These include the patient age, the performance status of the patient and if there is any health problem regarding the liver, uh, heart, kidney and others. For example, in patient age, the old age people may have 
comorbidities and these comorbidities will interfere with the use of certain effective drug for the malignancy and young age like female like age the young age uh, has issue of fertility so we have to consider the uh, fertility when we choose the appropriate drug for the malignancy the general state of the health this is meaning the the performance status of the patient and we have many scores for the performance status for the uh, malignant disease in the oncology uh, specialty we have what is called ECOG performance status and Koronofsky uh, performance status. ECOG meaning the Eastern Cooperative Oncology Group performance status. And Koronofsky state, status and Koronofsky score is another score for the detection of the performance status of the patient. Type of anti cancer treatment is also important if we choose uh, a new drug for the patient with progressive disease we have to avoid the drugs that is used before because this drug will be not effective except in certain situations of course the potential patient response meaning after the use of the drug we have four possibilities regarding the patient the patient may develop complete response response or partial response or the patient may, may have stable disease or may develop unfortunately progressive disease complete response meaning complete disappearance of the tumor and this is will be detected by clinical history clinical examination tumor markers which are specific markers whether serological or others and also by important thing which are the imaging tests like CT studies and other imaging tests a partial response there is meaning there is a response for the treatment but this response is not complete it is more than 50 percent here more than 50 percent meaning there is a response of the patient and the patient will be in the state of partial response while a stable disease meaning the disease will have a very small percentage of response and this is, is less than 50 percent okay Less than 50% decrease, or there is slight increase in the size of the mass and of the disease. A progressive disease meaning there is an increase in the size and the number on treatment. For example, patient treated on uh, anti uh, malignant drugs or like say toxic chemotherapy or others, but the patient developed during the treatment uh, new lesions away from the site of origin, and so this patient meaning has a progressive disease yes now we'll discuss the chemotherapeutic agents in details because uh, it is the oldest type of drugs used in the world and it is still used for the malignancies management it is cheap available better than others which are very costly the chemotherapeutic agents are used for the malignancy either as neoadjuvant chemotherapy or adjuvant or palliative chemotherapy. Neoadjuvant is used before the surgery. When the mass, for example, large mass, is localized to the organ, there is no metastasis, but the mass cannot be removed. For example, patient has breast cancer, large mass fixed to the surrounding tissue for example fixed to the skin or fixed to the bone or maybe involvement of the multiple lymph nodes that are bulky lymph nodes cannot be removed axillary lymph nodes for example with the presence of large breast mass here it is called local advanced disease it needs to be shrinked before surgical removal okay another uh, example is pancreatic tumor that is what is called borderline pancreatic tumor in which cannot be removed but can, can be shrinked and decreased in size before surgery by new adjuvant chemotherapy while the adjuvant treatment meaning the the disease is localized to the organ and this malignancy is removed and then followed by adjuvant treatment the goal of this treatment is to prevent prevent the growth of cancer cells remaining after surgery or radiation during surgery, the surgeon will remove the mass and will remove some of the tissue surrounding the mass to achieve the safety margin for the malignancy. But he cannot see cells, maybe 
spread or may be present away from the mass and this cannot be seen by uh, eyes these cells can go later on and uh, later on and can give a new growth of malignancy so by adjuvant chemotherapy we can kill these cells now the patient may have uh, metastasis from the start that is what's called the novo metastasis meaning the patient has uh, multiple site involvement of the disease by malignant disease rather than being localized to the site of origin now the patient uh, can be treated by palliative type of treatment for chemotherapy and the patient may have also what is called CAP that is carcinoma of unknown primary origin uh, the patient has malignancy but the origin is not known here the use of treatment as palliative treatment also the palliative treatment is used for the disease that cannot be resected cannot be surgically removed and it is resistant for the radiation yes Chemotherapeutic agents has focus of preventing the cancer cells from multiplying, invading the adjacent tissue or developing metastasis. Another objective also is to destroy all the malignant cells without excessive destruction of the normal cells. The chemotherapeutic agents can be classified into three groups according to their action on the cell cycle. Could be cell cycle specific or could be cell cycle non-specific or could be combination action on the cell cycle the cell cycle specific mostly affect the s phase and some of the m phase of the cell administered in minimal concentration by continuous dosing routes example of these cell cycle specific are topoisomerase inhibitor like ionotican topotican etoposides dna synthesis these are act on the s phase of the cell cycle like 5 seal and methotrexate Another group of cell cycle specific what is called vinca alkaloids which act on the M phase of the cell which inhibit the spindle cell formation during the mitosis like vincristine, vindicine, vinoplastine. okay? This group of drugs of chemotherapy called cell cycle specific. While the cell cycle non-specific drugs affect dividing cells and resting cells in all phases of the cell cycle and these are administered in a single bolus injection like what? like the alkylating agent that uh, alter the DNA like nitrogen mustard and busulifan or anti-tumor agents like the bleomycin, mitomycin combination of drug, these drugs agents that differ in both cell cycle specificity and their toxicities are combined to maximize the tumor cell killing with minimal toxicity and administered in repeated courses. Okay. Now, there are many methods for administration of the chemotherapy. Could be by IV infusion, could be topical use, could be oral, could be intraperitoneal, could be intrapleural, could be intraarterial, and could be also intralegional inside the lesion of the drug. Uh, this picture showing what is called the protocath, both it is a protocath. It is a specific central line like diaphragm put under the skin and uh, has lesser side effects during the infusion of the drug. We look at this patient has protocath in the right uh, upper part of his shoulder and this part for the administration of the chemotherapy. Now the chemotherapy can give multiple side effects and these also features can result without chemotherapy, what is called cancer-related symptoms. And uh, the goal, the most important objective and goal of this lecture is how to manage the cancer-related symptoms of, or cancer therapy-related symptoms. There is a long list of uh, side effects of the drugs and long list of features can be developed as related to the cancer itself and each feature of these needs actually a specific lecture but i will try to summarize the most important point regarding the most important side effects of drugs or cancer related symptoms the first issue it was called cimv which is the chemotherapy induced nausea and vomiting or nausea and vomiting associated with cytotoxic agents Vomiting by itself is a natural protective mechanism to rid uh, the body of toxic substances. 
However, in the setting of cancer chemotherapy and radiation therapy, nausea and vomiting become toxic effects of major concern. Uh, really, this side effects is the most common side effect seen with the use of the chemotherapy, and the patient usually suffer from severe vomiting sometimes. So we have to use uh, specific drugs to prevent these side effects. Protracted emesis can lead to dehydration, electrolyte imbalance, and other metabolic derangement, as well as early discontinuation of chemotherapy. Okay, so frequent vomiting, and uh, the patient may develop dehydration, hypokalemia, other electrolyte disturbance. So all these should be treated with the treatment of the malignancy. It can be classified, this is nausea and vomiting with the drugs, as acute or delayed type of nausea and vomiting, or anticipatory nausea and vomiting. Acute, meaning the development of the nausea and vomiting induced by chemotherapy has been uh, at, as that which occurs within the first 24 hours. So, in the first day, the patient taking the chemotherapy and first 24 hours after administration of chemotherapy agents. While delayed nausea and vomiting, meaning the patient develop this nausea and vomiting occurring two to five days after the administration, administration of chemotherapy, may drugs can give, give rise to the uh, delayed type of nausea and vomiting like ciflatine, cyclophosphamide, and others. Anticipatory nausea and vomiting, this type of uh, uh, nausea and vomiting developed uh, as a reflex that is rapidly established by poor antiemetic protection during an earlier course of chemotherapy. That's to say, the patient uh, have protocol of chemotherapy and uh, a regular protocol just one day before development of the chemotherapy, he will have features of nausea and vomiting. That is called anticipatory nausea and vomiting. So within 24 hours of taking uh, chemotherapy, it is called acute. Two to five days called delayed, while anticipatory just before starting of chemotherapy. Treatment of nausea and vomiting include the uh, specific drugs used to prevent the emesis, and this is what's called pre medication preparation for the patient before taking chemotherapy. In multiple lines of treatment are used. The most important is 5-HT3 receptor antagonist like ondansterone. Uh, ganisterone, dolasterone, and also other drugs, which is very, very important, neurokine, one receptor antagonist, which is called a prepotent, and uh, other drugs are used, like olanzapine. These drugs are used, as seen in this, in this uh, uh, table, for the as high therapeutic index agents, while other drugs, like dopamine 2 receptor antagonist, metoclopramide, phenothiazine, uh, or uh, butyrphenone, these are with limited therapeutic index. And also we can use adjuvant or adjunct adjunctive drugs like benzodiazepine and antihistamine. Yes. The other issue important to relate to the cancer and cancer-related uh, therapy is what is called estrogen deprivation symptoms. This is the hot flash, which is very important. Menopausal symptoms, including hot flash, are highly prevalent among patients with breast cancer and other premenopausal women who undergo ovarian function suppression. Additionally, approximately 75% of men undergoing androgen deprivation therapy will have substantial discomfort because of hot flash. Many times, these hot flashes are severe and may last for considerable time. So hot flash may be associated may, with many malignancies, especially with breast cancer and prostate cancer related to the use of the endocrine therapy like tamoxifen and uh, LHRH agonist, which is called Zolodex for the treatment of prostate cancer. Estrogen and androgen can alleviate hot flashes for women and men respectively. Clearly, there is a concern about giving estrogen to women who have had breast cancer. Similarly, the administration of androgens to men with prostate cancer defeats the purpose of androgen deprivation therapy. We have non-hormonal therapies and we have hormonal therapy for the treatment of hot flash features. 
the non-hormonal therapies to decrease the hot flash include the following selective serotonin reactive inhibitor and selective non-serotonin uh, receptor inhibitor with caution the use of paroxetine and tamoxifen together also we can use gabapentin also we can use other measures away from drugs which is called acupuncture hormonal therapy for the hot flashes can include the use of progesterone analogs now oral mucositis and esophagitis associated with the treatment is another issue important in the cancer treatment the severity of mucositis is dose and treatment specific Mucositis typically starts 5 to 7 days after the initiation of chemotherapy. It often presents first as erythema of the soft palate, of the mucal mucosa, the ventral surface of the tongue, and the floor of the mouth. So, can start only erythema, not ulcers. These symptoms may progress later on to generalized desuccumation, and this desuccumation will give rise to ulcers. More than 90% of ulcerations are localized on non-keratinized mucosa. On non-keratinized mucosa, mucositis that result from chemotherapy can resolve within a few days or last up to 2-3 weeks. Mural oral mucositis caused by radiation therapy typically lasts an average of 6 weeks. So, this oral mucositis can result from use of chemotherapy or radiotherapy and is of different grades starting from erythema up to severe ulceration of the mouth. Uh, actually, these ulcers can be a source of infection and if the patient develops neutropenia, later on can develop neutropenic fever by infection from these ulcers. Now, steps to prevent the oral mucositis. There are many steps as seen in this uh, uh, table. First step is alter the, the alter the mucosal delivery and a secretion of individual chemotherapy agents. Uh, when the mucous membrane have less exposure to the cytotoxic agents with the use of certain drugs like oral cryotherapy. The other step is to modify the epithelial proliferative capabilities of the mucosa. Rate of basal epithelial cells proliferation correlates with the susceptibility of the mucosal tissues to the toxic effects of chemotherapy and the other step is to decrease the local inflammatory response with the use of certain drugs like oral corticosteroid rinsing an example of drugs that use of oral corticosteroid is what is called the affinitor which is a virulent monster drug it is used for the treatment of many malignancies like breast cancer and also for the neuroendocrine tumor and others the side effects of the drug is the oral mucosal ulcerations. So, prophylactic use the Dixon syrup as uh, oral uh, preparation just for the use orally as rinsing with the use of this drug, which are tablet. Viviranimus is tablet used as one of the uh, drugs used for treatment of malignancies. The other important uh, issue is the malignant ascites. Ascites, meaning the accumulation of fluid in the abdominal cavity, is a common cause of distress for patients with advanced cancer. Less than 10% of cases of ascites are associated with malignancies, and more than 80% of these develop in patients with epithelial cancers, particularly of the ovaries, endometrium, breast, colon, GIT tract malignancies, and pancreas, as we see here in this lecture. The patient developed a huge ascites with the inverted umbilicus. The treatment of ascites, there are many uh, types of treatment. Of course, the therapeutic paracentesis is the primary treatment of choice for most patients with cancer who have symptomatic ascites. In the condition of permanent and recurrent ascites, we can use indwelling catheter that can provide relief for the patient to acquire repeated paracentesis because frequent uh, visit to the hospital and may develop frequent uh, types of aspiration, we can use indwelling peritoneal catheter. 
Now there is an important point that colloid and albumin infusion are generally not required unless the patient is symptomatic after large volume paracentesis. Okay? The diuretics can be used. The diuretic uh, can be used for the treatment of the ascites in patient with the uh, metastatic disease to the peritoneal cavity and collection of fluid. The best treatment is the use of spironolactone, which is the aldactone, used as 50 mg by 2 for the treatment of ascites. Fusamide can be added after the treatment with spironolactone when it is started. The other issue is anorexia and cachexia. Involuntary weight loss, long recognized as an adverse prognostic factor for patients with cancer, has been reported to occur in 15-40% to 40 of patients at the time of cancer presentation, and in as many as 80% of patients with advanced cancer. Anorexia contributes to the wasting seen in the cancer-related cachexia, but it is not the only cause. The etiology of involuntary weight loss for patients with cancer is believed to be multifactorial. Uh, for the treatment of uh, anorexia, there are many types of uh, appetizers can be used, but in the malignancy as trials, they found the progesterone analog like magisterol acetate that can be used for the treatment of patients with anorexia and malignancy are generally better t uh, tolerated than corticosteroid when given for a substantial period of time. So the steroid itself can be used, but it is found that magisterial state is better than steroid. But of course, deep vena thrombosis and also adrenal suppression are two notable side effects of magisterial acetate. Sometimes we have to use total parental nutrition should be used uh, only for carefully selected patients. I mean by TPN, which is total parental nutrition, is supplying the patient with uh, vitamins, proteins, other elements rather than fluid only. The IV fluid used in the hospitals and uh, outside the hospital include only fluid and uh, sugar or fluid with uh, salt, while the TPN include other minerals, vitamins, and uh, protein, uh, also include the lipid, okay? The other issue is the area associated with cancer or cancer therapy. Chemotherapy can cause the area by irritating or damaging the crypts or and villi in the intestinal mucosa. And the essence of severity of chemotherapy in the area depends on many factors including the treatment regimen and drug dose. Generally speaking, the area is the most common with a regimen that include anti-metabolites. Anti-metabolites, of course, a group of drugs that act on certain enzymes in the metabolism of the drug. Like what? Like 5 fluoroacetyl methotrexate, bimetrix, and other drugs that act on the enzyme specific for the replication of the cell. So when we use these drugs, we have to use other drugs to prevent the side effects of these drugs, like folinic acid. Vitamin B12 also is used in certain chemotherapeutic agents. The most studied these agents is 5 fluoroacetyl to cause diarrhea for the patient. Really, it is found there uh, a specific syndrome when there is dihydroxy, uh, dehydrogenase deficiency. This uh, enzyme is found in certain percentage of the people associated with, associated with severe side effects and sometimes can lead to the severe diarrhea and dehydration and even death. Arinatucan and another cytotoxic drug used with the uh, patient for specific malignancies like GIT malignancies. And this drug can cause severe diarrhea. So with the use of this arinotican, which is TOBA isomerase inhibitor type 1, uh, we give prophylactic atropine subcutane once to prevent the diarrhea associated with the use of this drug. It is important to note that patients who have received antibiotics or cisplatin based therapy may have Clostridium difficile infection, and that patients with enteropenia are at risk of, for typh uh, typhilitis. Okay? 
So the patient may develop uh, diarrhea for certain chemotherapeutic agent and complication. Diarrhea is a common side effect of many of the new targeted therapies. I mean, diarrhea can be associated with chemotherapy like anti-metabolite, like topoisomerase inhibitor, it's okay. But also other drugs used in the malignancy, like the small molecule inhibitors of abdermal growth factor receptor, these are the targeted therapy. Like what? Like erlotinib, gefitinib, afatinib. All these drugs reported to cause diarrhea up to 90% of patients. But only 15% of patients have severe diarrhea. Okay. For the management of diarrhea, we have this diagram. So we have to evaluate the patient condition at first support of diarrhea and initiate dietary management. Of course, we, we have to advise the patient to avoid certain fatty uh, food and to follow certain dietary control like yogurt, tea, and other certain uh, food items and initiate topamide at a standard dose of 4 mg initially and then 2 mg every 2 every sorry 2 mg every 4 hours or after every unformed stool okay so we start two tablets each tablet has 2 mg initially and then one tablet every 4 hour or after every unformed stool and then monitor the patient after 12 to 4, 24 hours. Of course, this diagram for the diarrhea induced by the use of chemotherapy or the targeted therapy. I said for this patient, we have to do uh, assessment and give dietary control and then start with uh, lopramide treatment and then monitor the patient after 12 to 24 hours. If they are resolved, like in this uh, green box here, to, we have to continue on diet and gradually add solid food and stop levamide after 12 hours without diarrhea. While here in the orange box, if there is low grade diarrhea, grade 1 or 2, we have to continue on high dose levamide, 2 mg every 2 hours, and observe the patient for response. In condition of severe diarrhea, grade 3 and 4, that the patient has multiple uh, times of uh, loose bowel motion and the patient for a long period or the patient may develop dehydration, we, here we have to admit the patient to hospital. Why? For rehydration, to start IV fluid and also to give uh, certain drugs like octreotide, 100 microgram to 150 microgram subcontinuously three times daily per day. And also we have to start IV fluid and antibiotics as needed and we have to do multiple investigation like the CBC, complete blood count, and also electrolyte profile for the serum potassium, serum sodium, chloride, magnesium, and so. So this diagram showing the management uh, for the chemotherapy induced diarrhea. And the other important issue that most of the patients suffer from it, what is called cancer fatigue. The NCCN, I mean NCCN is National Cancer Comprehensive Network, which is an important guideline in oncology, has defined cancer fatigue as a distressing, persistent, subjective sense of physical, emotional, and or cognitive tiredness or exhaustion related to cancer or cancer treatment that is not proportional to recent activity and interferes with the usual functioning. Now, if the patient came to us with the suffer of uh, fatigue, we have to evaluate the cancer fatigue uh, by history, of course, physical examination uh, and screening for uh, blood work, including the CBC, chemistry evaluation, renal function, thyroid function is very important, liver function, calcium, and electrolytes. Why? Because many chemotherapeutic agents can lead to the electrolyte disturbance, and some of them can cause uh, hypothyroidism, like a specific drug tar targeted therapy, what is called sunitinib. Sunitinib is a drug used for the renal cell carcinoma. It can cause hypothyroidism. So we have to evaluate the patient by history, physical examination, and certain investigation. And also a renal function test should be uh, evaluated. 
and you have to screen for depression, which may be the cause for his fatigue. If the screening evaluation detects uh, any abnormalities, reasonable attempts, of course, to correct them are recommended. In patients with cancer fatigue, the most important point of treatment and management is the exercise. Exercise during and after therapy appears to improve the fatigue. Data support a trial of ginseng also uh, in clinical practice is uh, effective. The other issue is the skin complications results from the use of chemotherapy or other targeted therapy. The skin rashes from targeted therapy uh, is a common side effect. One of the most common toxic effects of epidermal growth factor receptor inhibitor, this is which is called EGFR inhibitors, is a prominent skin rash affecting up to 50% of patients treated with these drugs. So 50% of them can develop skin rash. This rash has acne form characteristics, but it's not considered acne. Like this picture, this patient has non-small cell line cancer and uh, use the what is called Tarceva drug, which is erlotinib, which is epidermal growth factor receptor inhibitor, and the patient developed widespread skin rash, similar to the acne, which has got acne form characteristics, but is not acne. Uh, proposed treatment for a skin rash caused by EGFR include sunscreen, skin moistures, topical steroid cream, steroid cream, topical clindamycin, and oral doxycycline. These measures can be used for the treatment of EGFR uh, inducing skin rash. Capsitabine induced palmar plantar erythrodysesthesia is best managed by dose attention. This capsitabine is type of oral chemotherapy. It is oral form of 5 fluorouracil which is the anti-metabolite drug. It is easy to be taken by the patient, but unfortunately can cause side effects as palmar and the plantar skin rash with different grades, sometimes ulcerating skin rash. Yes. The other skin issue caused by treatment, it is called alopecia. Alopecia is a common side effects of cancer therapy. A scalp cryotherapy can be effective for selected patient. Uh, this picture showing the alopecia that can be developed with the use of chemotherapy, while this is one of the measures that can be used to prevent the alopecia. Actually, alopecia is more most distressing feature for the patient using treatment as chemotherapy. Now, caring for scalp and hair during the chemotherapy, do not use hair coloring or permanent treatment, and also do not use uh, brush type rollers, use of mild shampoos, avoid blow drying, use soft brushes, use of sunblock with most or all hair loss, to protect scalp from sun use hat, scarf, or turban, all these can be used as measures uh, of care with the use of chemotherapy. Now we'll uh, discuss an important oncology emergency, one of the most hot areas in this lecture is intrapenic fever. Intrapenic fever is considered to be a most uh, life-threatening oncologic emergency. It is defined as a single oral temperature of equal or more than 38.3 degrees centigrade or as a temperature more than 38 degrees centigrade for one hour period with the presence of neutropenia that absolute neutrophil count is less than 500. This is very important. So fibral neutropenia or what is called neutropenic fever, we have two parts. Neutropenia, when there is the, the absolute neutrophil count less than 5 uh, 100 per uh, cubic millimeter and the fever when there is an increase of the body temperature that is more than 38.3 in uh, single uh, reading or more than 38 degrees centigrade for one hour period okay so the patient has entropenia and fever 
this is very important oncologic emergency uh, regarding the patient taking chemotherapy. After the, we receive the patient, we have to take the history for the drugs and the uh, protocol of the treatment, and then we start examination, including the intravascular access device, like uh, the cannula and so. The skin examination, if there is any skin uh, inflammation, cellulitis, infection. The lung and sinus is also is important, maybe the source of infection from the upper uh, aerodigestive system. And also alimentary canal is important. The perivaginal and perirectal, this is a hidden areas that should be carefully examined when there is uh, fibrinotropenia. Urological examination also and neurological because the patient may be uh, caused by the meningitis, for example. So the patient with the use of chemotherapy has immune compromised condition and may develop infection from any side of the body. Should be examined carefully for these areas, which I remember uh, I said. The after the examination, the laboratory and radiology assessment by CBC with differential platelet, radionitrogen, electrolyte, creatinine, liver function test. Consider also chest X-ray, urine analysis. A pulse oximetry is important. Blood culture, at least two sets of blood cultures are recommended. It is very important. We have not. We have to uh, remember two sets of blood culture are recommended. Site of specific culture like diarrhea, skin lesion, vascular excess, cutaneous site with inflammation, and viral culture also uh, is used. Then the risk is assessed depending on the findings of history, physical examination, and investigation. I mean, after we have the history, physical examination, and the laboratory investigation, now we will have risk stratification as low risk patients or high risk patients. Low risk patients need no admission to the hospital. I, this the patient has fever and also has neutropenia and developed uh, features of bronchopenia, but has low risk uh, in the risk score. Uh, we can discharge the patient on treatment oral like amoxicillin clopinic acid plus the cerbaprexacin, which is category one. Category one meaning the preferred type of treatment. Levofloxacin, moxifloxacin, all these can be used if fever persists or occur after 48 hours in the outpatient hospital dishes is recommended with management as high risk. So if the patient has low risk, after we do physical examination investigation, we put in the uh, low risk group, uh, we try to treat him in the home by oral treatment. If there is no response, then we have to consider him as high risk. In this condition, start empirical hospital IV therapy. The first line monotherapy is antipsychotic beta lactamase agent like meropenem, imipenem, piperacillin, tazafactam, and cefibim. All drugs need renal adjustment according to the creatinine clearance. Okay. If no response, then vancomycin and antifungal drugs are used. Actually, in the management of high-risk patients, we start from the uh, broad-spectrum agent like tazosimpactam and so uh, for two or three days. If there is no response, we add to it vancomycin for two further two or three days. If there is no response, now we start antifungal drugs like amphotericin and others. The other important issue is the hematological complication with the use of chemotherapy. One of the most important is anemia. Anemia is a common in patients with cancer. Anemia is caused by multiple factors, including anti-cancer therapy with chemotherapy, radiation, or surgery. Transfusion are recommended for patients with symptomatic anemia. For less severe anemia, erythropoietic agents decrease the transfusion requirements and increase hemoglobin levels. Both darboboietin and erythropoietin are relatively similar regarding efficacy and safety. But we have to be careful with use of these drugs because of their uh, fatal side effects or severe side effects like uh, stroke and others. Current recommendations are to cease use of erythropoietin products when the hemoglobin level is greater than or equal to 12 gram per deciliter. The other issue important for regarding the 
cancer and cancer related uh, uh, therapy is bone health. Uh, bone health is an issue in the general population are receiving more attention with the recognition of fracture problems associated with osteopenia, osteoporosis, the aging population and the availability of treatment options for prevention and or treatment of this situation. Uh, the many malignancies can give rise to the bone metastasis, but the most common malignancies in female is the breast cancer and in the male is prostate cancer. Like in this picture we show, uh, it shows this picture, multiple sites of bone metastasis. Bone metastasis by the malignancy could be osteolytic, osteoplastic or mixed osteolytic and osteoplastic. Prostate cancer is a uh, well-known cause of osteoplastic metastasis. Now bone loss is common with estrogen depletion in women and in men receiving androgen ablation therapy. We have many lines for treatment of the bone complications. Most important is bisphosphonate, zoledronic acid in patients with bone metastasis. This is zoledronic acid. Uh, can be given every three months for two years as opposed to monthly. Previously, it was used monthly and for one year and then in the second year, every three months. Nowadays, trials and studies show there is no difference if it is given from the start as every three months for two years. Oral dose of calcium, vitamin D and weight bearing exercise are recommended for patients at risk of for bone loss. Bisphosphonate and dinozumab can cause osteonecrosis of the jaw. Dinozumab is another line of drugs can be used for as bone modifying agent. Uh, but this drug, uh, in addition to the bisphosphonate also, can cause side effects like osteonecrosis of the jaw. Although both bisphosphonate and dinozumab can decrease skeletal related events in patients with bone metastasis and dinozumab is slightly superior to zoledronic acid. Available guidelines at this time do not recommend one over the other. Yes. The other important issue is the effect of the drugs on the peripheral nerves and the patient developed is called CIPN, chemotherapy induced peripheral neuropathy. It is a common clinical problem, especially with platinum agents like cisplatin, oxyplatin, and also in taxanes drug, taxanes drug like bacritaxel, docetaxel, and also on vinca alkaloid drug like vincristine, vindicine, vinoplastine, all these drugs and others can give rise to the neuropathy. These agents can cause numbness, tingling, pain, usually in a stocking glove distribution. Of course, when the patient develops pain, we have to classify this pain, whether somatic pain or neuropathic pain. Here, when there is neuropathy, of course, it is a type of neuropathic pain. There are no established methods for preventing chemotherapy induced for neuropathy other than limiting exposure to offending drugs. But deloxetine is best established for treating of CIPN, although its efficacy is limited. Okay, so deloxetine is a drug that can be used for chemotherapy induced polyneuropathy. The other important issue in the management of malignancies is the cardiac complication and secondary malignancies. Cardiac complication can occur after the use of certain drugs like adriamycin uh, that is used for many malignancies like breast cancer, cardiac complications by this drug is irreversible. If the cumulative dose is more than that can be tolerated by the patient. Adriamycin, of course, one of the uh, antibiotic uh, chemotherapeutic agent and also has topoisomerase inhibitor activity. But the problem with it is a cardiotoxic drug and can cause irreversible changes in the cardiac uh, complication. Uh, the other drug that is used for the treatment of the breast cancer and other malignancies called trastuzumab, which is herceptine by genetic name, commonly used is monoclonal antibody used for treatment of HER2-positive breast cancer and other specific malignancies. 
it has reversible cardiac complication, so a follow-up of the patient by echocardiography is required. Secondary malignancies like skin cancer, breast cancer, and hematologic malignancies can be developed after the use of chemotherapy like alkylating agent and etoposide. The other issue is the development of the thromboembolic uh, condition and uh, like DVT that can be uh, developed after certain malignancies, especially the CA stomach and pancreatic cancer. All patients with cancer should receive prophylactic anticoagulant when hospitalized, unless contraindicated. Ambulatory outpatients with cancer should not routinely receive anticoagulation, except in those on thalidomide and linolidomide. Low molecular weight heparin is preferred over warfarin in cancer patients. This picture showing asymmetry between the two legs for the patient. The right one is swollen red and this uh, swelling and redness uh, meaning there is high possibility of being DVT. So we have to do Doppler ultrasound and other measures for diagnosis of DVT to start the appropriate treatment. For the malignancy, the best is to use the low molecular weight heparin rather than oral warfarin. Now this slide showing the cytotoxic precautions, protective equipment with the use of chemotherapy during operation. We have the, pay, the, the pharmacist and the medical paramedic should you, you, uh, use gown, gloves, goggles, masks, cytotoxic caution signs, and uh, also spill kits. And the sharps containers needle replaced should be specific containers. Conclusions, different types of cancer therapeutic agents can give various side effects. Cancer and cancer therapy symptoms should be treated carefully and accordingly. Now, uh, after the, this presentation, I want to assess your knowledge and your attention by specific questions that can be uh, answered by the use of social medias. First one, definition of metoponic fever. The second one is mentioning mention two drugs that cause CIMV, which is chemotherapy induced nausea and vomiting. Third question, for which cancer-related symptom magistral state is used? Fourth, mention drug use for chemotherapy-induced polyneuropathy, CIPN. The fifth point, and uh, I want to assess your knowledge, mention two targeted drugs used for malignant diseases. Of course, these questions for undergraduate students, not for postgraduate. Uh, these informations uh, from the references ASCO guideline, ASCO textbook, 6th edition, DeVita, 10th edition, and also other few uh, references. Thank you for attention and good luck.